Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna teach you three things that you can do to take a simple riff idea like this. And to help you make it into something more math rock like this. For this one, we're gonna be in standard tuning, but all of the ideas apply to any tuning that you may wish to use. I also aim to show you how math rock melodies differ from more conventional style riffs and melodies that you may be familiar with. So, step one, introduce dissonance and make your ideas more angular sounding. Typically, math rock riffs tend to contain more dissonance, so they sound a bit less familiar than more conventional styles of riff writing. For example, the following melody is quite pleasing, it's smooth and it's easy to listen to. And if we were to introduce some kind of dissonance to this melody, it would already start to sound more like a math rock style riff. And all I've done in this melody is change two of the notes. In addition, because I've changed these two notes, now the riff has become more angular sounding. It sounds more spiky. If we take a look at the original riff melody idea, we can see that the idea flows smoothly in an arch-like fashion. There's no big jumps between the notes. The intervals are very small and the notes that have been used are quite safe notes. They are something we call chord tones. So they are mostly roots, thirds and fifths. In contrast to this, in the changed melody, there are big distances we say the interval is bigger so there's bigger jumps in some of the notes making this melody more angular giving it more of a spiky feeling some intervals that you can use to achieve this are the minor second interval <laughs> Minor seventh interval and the major seventh interval. So experiment with these within your ideas to make your riffs sound more angular and just adjust to personal taste. The second step is to think of the phrasing of your riff idea. Now we have some kind of melody outline for our riff idea. The next step in our math rock riff creating journey is to think about the phrasing of this idea to make it sound more riff-like and less melody-like. The original idea is phrased in this very straight eighth note idea basically and if we add a simple drum beat and we can accent beats two and four we can hear how this is like quite a common melody idea that you'll hear in conventional styles of music. To contrast this with our math rock riff, we need to move these accents off the strong beats and move them into more unfamiliar territory. So we can do this by rearranging the phrasing, so how we play the idea and which notes we accent. So we can use something called syncopation. And this means our stronger beats are now occurring in more irregular places. They have been shifted off the beat. By phrasing this idea ever so slightly differently from the original idea, we can shift the accents and we can come up with a more mathier style riff like this. So experiment with the phrasing and experiment with where you're accenting the strong beats in your ideas. One way you can build up your phrasing vocabulary and looking at where you can place the accent in different places is to you know expose yourself to math rock music, pay attention to what's been accented and also by learning those riffs as well you'll pick up various phrasings that will start to work its way into your own playing. The last step of this video is bring it all together and to do this we are going to use odd time signatures. A commonly known feature of math rock is the use of shifting time signatures and the use of odd time signatures. So by odd time signatures we mean signatures that are not divisible by two and three. So things such as five, four, seven, eight, uh, what are we going to go with 13, eight for example, 
any kind of multiple that sounds and feels odd. However, that being said, there is a wealth of math rock that is in conventional time signatures, you know, common time, like 4-4. However, the way they subdivide the beats where they put the accents makes it feel as if it's in odd time. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, subdividing time signatures, uh, you can check out the, this video. To wrap up our idea, I'm going to extend this bar to a bar of 5-4. So we're adding a, another quarter note to the bar and to wrap it up nicely, I added these. Uh, I've added two eighth notes to bring it back round to the start of the phrase again. It wraps up nicely and listen how this 5-4 feeling definitely gets us within that math rock riff territory. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope you found some use in this. I want to mention that obviously there are other ways you can approach writing riffs. This is just one way I thought of and I thought perhaps it's very accessible for you. I would like to know your thoughts and what your ideas are, so please share them below in the comments. Let's help each other out. If you are interested in learning more about math rock, I do have a math rock guitar ebook available and there's a link for that down below in the description. I want to say thank you very much to the patrons that are supporting this channel. They are making this kind of content possible. If you would like to support the channel, there are various links for that down below in the description. I want to say thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.